All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So my name is Tom Harrod. I'm the research support librarian at Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. And what I'm going to be talking to you about today is writing an abstract for your research state poster. But these are sort of general ideas that will help you write an abstract for any type of poster uh, session or conference. <laughs> So my outline is, I'm going to start with what is an abstract, and it's obvious, but I think it's important to really talk through what the parts of an abstract are and what it's supposed to accomplish. Um, so the parts and the purpose of it. Then I'm going to go through some best practices to help you kind of optimize your chances of success when writing your abstract. The one thing is, if you have any questions, Ask at any time. You don't have to wait till the end or anything like that. Just raise your hand and I'll. So what is an abstract? Uh, this may seem pretty obvious, uh, but people have different definitions and people write these up in different ways. So I want to be really clear about what I mean by this. Um, so I want to talk about kind of the what and the why of abstracts. I think it's really important to understand the parts of an abstract and really what you're trying to accomplish with that. So we're going to talk through that a little bit. So what is an abstract? Uh, for one thing, it's brief. Uh, it's typically 250 to 400 words, depending on the conference. That may sound like a lot, but with all that you're trying to accomplish, that's really not a lot of words. And so that will we'll come back to this theme, but that's very difficult to do sometimes. <clears throat> it's the poster in miniature. So every section of the poster will be reflected in the abstract. Um, and that's because the abstract is intended to be self-contained. It's intended to stand on its own. There'll be various parts in the process where it actually has to stand on its own. So it's going to be your whole story told in miniature. So typical parts are reflective of the typical parts of a poster. So the backgrounds, hypothesis, methods, results, so the background, you have to think about who your audience is. And for research day, it's going to be people with sort of general scientific training and knowledge. It's not going to be people, all people who are experts in your area. So you're talking, your audience is going to be people with kind of a general scientific knowledge. So you have to give a background and an introduction. You have to describe or kind of convey to them why this, what the issue is and why it's important. So if I was talking about, you know, maternal health in Sub-Saharan Africa, I don't just jump into my research. I'm going to explain with statistics or with whatever what the issue is and why it's an important issue. So you have to give them that context at first. Then the hypothesis that you're trying to test, what is the question you're trying to answer? And the methods, what are the, method, what's the methodology that you're going to use to try to answer that question? Then results and conclusions. So results is just the facts. You know, we did the survey and this is what we saw. We did the experiment and this is what we saw. It's merely factual. Conclusions is where you say what this means. So it's taking the facts, the data, and coming up with the meaning of that or what you think it implies. So it's you start by framing the question or framing the problem. <laughs> And yeah, so we talked a little bit. <clears throat> I think this is a really important thing to think about with abstracts. It's probably the most important part of the poster because it's the part that will, the part that people will see before, during, and after the poster, the research day, or the conference. So it's how you get accepted. You submit an abstract. So what people will see, the first thing other than your title, of course, that people will see before, during, and after the event is your abstract. So it's what you submit to get accepted. And so in a you know, research day, but with a lot of conferences, they're very space limited. So it's competitive. So they are actually judging the abstract to see if you know what they want to accept. And so that's how you put your best foot forward. At the poster session, it's how you how you'll get attention from a lot of people. So, for instance, for those who have never been to a poster session, it 
conference room, there's all sorts of boards set up and you put your poster up. And you stand there for the allotted time and there's people who come to the poster session from all you know, public health, from School of Medicine, School of Nursing, Engineering, whatever, all scientific backgrounds, research backgrounds, and they're just walking around the, the conference area. So in my experience, they typically do one of two things. Either walk right at well, they may walk past you, so that's the third thing. But if they're interested, they may <laughs> want to do one of two things. One is walk right up to you and say, oh, tell me what your poster's about. And then they want the 30-second elevator speech there. They don't want you to read the whole thing to them. They just want you to tell them 30 seconds or less, what is this about? And they'll judge whether they're interested based on that. The other people will stand five feet back, they won't look you in the eye, and they're just reading your abstract. And if they like what they read, then they may move a few steps closer, make eye contact, and start talking to you. Um, so those are, in my experience, generally the two types of interactions you have at a poster session. And so for those second group, the second group, this is what they're reading, typically. I'm gonna skim through your abstract and see, yeah, that doesn't really interest me. Or, oh, I wanna find out more. I'll ask a question. Um, the other thing is after the poster session. So with research day, the abstracts be collected and added to uh, like there's the HSRC, which is I'll talk about at the end of the Health Sciences Research Commons. It's a repository run by Himmelfarb. So when you submit your abstract, there's going to be a thing on the submission form that says, do you want your abstract included? or your poster in the HSRC. What that's about is it's a repository that we run, which any student or faculty outputs, we host that there. What's great for you is it's a permanent repository with something that's durable that we keep going. So it'll create a record, which then you can link in a CV or a resume. So it's not just, I did this poster, it's I did this poster and here's a link to it. We'll actually put the poster up. But the abstract is part of that. So that's findable as well. That's the other thing is it gives your poster kind of a second life. That's one of the problems. Traditionally with poster sessions is you go through all this work, you create a poster, you show up, two hours is over, you just throw the poster in the back of the closet and forget about it. With the repository, we give that a second life, and that is searchable on Google, the repository. If someone uses the right terms, they'll find your poster on Google through our repository. So I want to encourage you, and I'll talk a little bit more at the end, to say yes to that, um, because it's good for you, because it gives the, the poster a second life, and it's something that allows you to link. Yes. This is a quick question. So uh, I'll just admit it uh, to a different uh, uh, conference, mm -hmm. but it requires that you know you can post it, you know, publicly, make it make it public before that accepted. So when saying that, so I I, I were to present it or put a poster mm -hmm. in GW, but can only be in GW, but not cannot be accessible like publicly accessible because of that. If my you know like access accepted by a, a different conference mm -hmm. because they don't want it to you to right. post it before before you post it. So I'm asking. So he's so. I, that's a great question. So, yeah. So yeah, if I understand your question, it is, I'm doing this thing at research day, but I also want to submit somewhere else. Yeah. And so I don't want my work to be publicly accessible before, before this other thing, yeah. because they have explicitly stated, don't do that. So with HSRC, you can create an embargo okay. where you say, here's all my information, but don't post it for one month six months, a year. I see, okay. So that's a very common thing. So that's, okay. thank you for that point. Uh, so that's, don't be scared off by that with the HSRC. When you submit it, you are absolutely in control of when it's posted immediately or with an embargo based on something like okay. that. Like I want to publish this and I don't want publishers to be scared off. So don't put this, make this available. Give me two years to publish this. Uh, and then we have that built into our program and it won't show up and it won't be findable for whatever the environment okay. period is. So yes, great question. Well, what if I, I you know, just click no and then kind of, can I, you know, like maybe a couple months later say, hey. Yeah, absolutely. Can you can come back at any time, yeah. Oh, okay, perfect, okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's, 
There is a person who runs it who oh, okay. uh, you'll be put in contact with, and you just tell her what the situation is, and she's okay. dealt with every permutation. Of okay. It. She'll honor whatever uh, you know, whatever it is that assumptions okay. you have. Great point. Um, so anyway, so that's the importance of the abstract. It's really before, during, and after the conference. That's what people seen, and that's what they're going to be drawn to. It's how you're going to get accepted. It's what's going to draw people's attention at the conference, and it's something that may draw people's attention after if you're posted somewhere. So for like a lot of conferences, they will just publish all the abstracts in a special issue of a, of a society journal. You know, that's findable. Um, but it's the abstract that they're publishing. They don't publish the whole poster. So this, the abstract is really kind of longest life. Um, so any other questions at this time before I move into some of the best So the first thing is know the rules. What I mean by that is every conference, research day, whatever, they all have their own rules. So some say 250 words, some say 400 words. Some will tell you what sections they want. Some will, you know, they have all sorts of rules for making the poster and writing the abstract. So know what those are. Don't just assume that, well, I used it in this one conference. I'll just reuse it somewhere else. Be sure to know the rules. And one of the issues there, for instance, is word counts. Um, people you go over a word count, let's say you're not really paying attention, and OK, it's 410 words. One of several things will happen. You may get, they may accept it. They may just say, whatever, 410 is close enough. They may just reject it. So now you've kind of given people an easy reason to reject your work. Uh, they may send it back and ask you to Edit it, or in some cases, I've heard they'll actually just chop off the last 10 words, regardless of what those 10 words are. So now it will sort of abruptly stop. Um, I've heard of that happening at some point. So they just don't want to deal with it. So they just chop off the offending words um, at the end, you know, all the words past 400. Uh, so all of those are bad situations, except for the one where they didn't accept it. But you don't know what they're going to do. So be sure to that because people do count the words. And on that topic, this is a really tough skill to learn is word managing word counts. So I wrote these two sentences. One is 17 words and the other is six and they basically say the same thing. And I, I guess I just made this up out of my head. Um, <clears throat> hold on, sure. But what I find kind of interesting in this is, as students, you're used to having kind of the other issue, which is uh, you have this paper due, and it has to be at least 10 pages double space. There are minimum word counts. Now you're entering the world of maximum word count, the opposite issue. So as we've all done with minimum word counts, you find ways of stretching sentences out, of adding extra words, of getting onto the <laughs> last page. That's a skill that a lot of people develop to deal with that. Now you're doing the opposite. You have to kind of go the opposite direction. You have to find out what is the most succinct way of saying what I want to say. And that's really the heart of scientific writing. Every word counts and minimizing the number of words it takes you to convey your concept. Invariably, when you write your abstract, you'll go over because you also want to be complete. I want to have my background, I want to have hypothesis, my methods, I want to have all these sections. You'll write it out and you'll probably go way over on that. And so it's going to be an exercise of pulling back. So you can see kind of how I pulled back with this, taking out extraneous things. So taking together, I don't really need to see that. Um, our experiments seem to indicate that's kind of wishy washy language and it's multiple words to say. You know, our experiments show some benefits for nursing mothers. You know, I just took out some and I sort of rearranged the words, and I basically, I eventually ended up with six words to say basically the same thing. <laughs> this is a real skill to develop, uh, and it's, I think it's honestly the hardest part of, of doing this.
Another thing is keywords, because remember I said that the articles or the abstracts will often be posted. Uh, so if you post to the HSRC, that's discoverable in Google. So one of the things to maximize your findability, because you want people to see your research. And the other thing that's great about HSRC is it generates statistics. So if you want to, we have stuff in the HSRC that gets downloaded thousands of times around the world. Um, we track in the software we use tracks of statistics so it's you can measure the impact that your work had in a way to maximize that what people will suggest is incorporating keywords so think about your project or think about your abstract what words if you were looking for it in Google what words would you and then be sure to include those words multiple times in the abstract Sort of a complicating thing, but it's think of what like the basic keywords are for your topic. You know, if you were to search for it, what words would you use to search for it? And just make sure to include those words because that increases the findability. That has to do with findability after the fact. Proofreading. So this is kind of an obvious point. Um, you know, you want to have grammar. You want to correct spelling, but you also want to proofread for clarity. This is something that I think burns a lot of students with it is write up a poster, you show it to people, you show it to your advisor, you show it to people who are working in the same area, and oh yeah, yeah, that looks great, exactly. But it's because they know the language, they know what you're studying, and so yes, it makes sense. You want someone who doesn't know what you're doing that's who your audience is going to be. It's going to be. It's not going to be the people in your lab. Excuse me. It's going to be people with some sort of a general scientific knowledge. So have someone, have a friend who has nothing to do with the research you're doing. Proofreading. Does this make sense? Can you understand what I'm doing? And that's you know that's can can really help you to avoid jargon, to avoid abbreviations, to avoid all those sorts of things that can throw off the general audience. <laughs> because that's it's part of the tunnel vision that you develop when you're doing research is you're just sort of immersed in this day after day and so yeah it makes sense to me I just write it out and I read it and yeah of course that makes sense but because I'm doing it every day of course it makes sense to me so ask someone who has no idea what you're doing to read it it makes sense to them it's really important more accessible to a general audience. Um, and along those lines, remembering your audience. <clears throat> so I have two sentences here. The first one I would say I think is pretty good for like a research date poster. So I said, suffering from PC, benefit from weekly sessions of cognitive processing therapy. Um, I'm assuming that my audience knows what PTSD is. I think that's a safe assumption among a general science audience. I'm assuming they don't know what CPT is, so I spell it out, cognitive processing therapy. I was talking to a group of psychiatrists, yeah, they know what that means. But again, I'm not talking to a group of psychiatrists, I'm talking to a group of people generally. Second one I would consider to be not a good sentence, because uh, I use a bunch of abbreviations in there that a general science audience are gonna RCC, I don't know what these things are. Caveat to that is, like for research day, you know, not good. If I was going to a conference of pediatric oncologists, then yeah, maybe this works, because it's assumed that everyone there is a pediatric oncologist, they're gonna know what all these abbreviations mean. So that's the other thing, is thinking about your audience with the language that you pick. Some things, like PTSD, I'm gonna assume a broadly educated scientific audience is going to understand that but not so much the other concepts i'm going to have to spell those out and define them so again this is thinking about your audience avoiding the tunnel vision of i'm immersed in this day in and day out so i know what these things mean have this is again where i have someone who has no idea what you're doing some language advice <clears throat> First is writing an active voice versus passive voice. 
pitch, I guess. Uh, so active voice is subject, verb, object. So the subject of the sentence followed by the verb followed by the object, the thing to which the verb applies. Passive voice is the opposite. It's putting the object, then the verb, and then the subject. So in this, uh, the younger respondents, that's the subject. They're the ones doing the consuming, and the caffeine is the object. It's the thing being consumed. I reverse that for the sentence. Second sentence, the caffeine is the thing being consumed and what's doing the consuming are at the end. So write an active voice. It's not the passive voice is ungrammatical or horrible. It's just that's generally how people write in science is active voice. Subject, verb, object is much more direct, usually uses fewer words. So it helps you streamline the process a bit. Um, that's just generally what the other is avoiding wishy-washy words. So uh, our results may indicate a positive correlation. Well, do they or don't they? Our results do indicate a positive correlation. So it's not saying over-represent your data. It's just avoid sometimes, could, maybe, perhaps. Avoid that kind of language. It's, that's kind of how we talk a lot of times. You know, if I'm describing my research to someone, I may want to sort of hedge my bets and I don't want to oversell it. It's a poster and an abstract isn't the place to do that. I want to avoid that sort of, you know, maybe, perhaps, sometimes, I could do this, you know, be, use much more sort of forward language and you know, avoiding that sort of language. The other thing is look at examples. So this is my thing. Um, one place to get those examples. I'll show you how I um, go to the Himmelfarb web page and then search research guides. In the middle there, I'm going to just go put in research day. Well, there's a research guide we have about research day. writing abstracts, and these are some examples that these uh, students have agreed to share with others of, you know, well-written abstracts. So it's always good, too, to kind of look at other examples. All right, so any questions about any of those things? So kind of in conclusion, and then I have a couple more points I want to make. Um, the abstract is the first thing that people will see before, during, and after the conference or a research day in this, uh, in this case. So it's very important to do a good job with it. It's how you'll get accepted, it's what will draw attention to your poster, and it's what's going to be findable about your research after the fact. The poster in miniature. It has all the sections of the poster. It should stand alone. Your abstract, someone should get your whole story from the abstract. But that also is the trick to it is there are word limits. And so you really have to be good about writing scientifically, minimizing the words you use. It's the fewest number of words I need to accurately convey this concept. It's going to take a lot of iterations. You're going to write it. You're going to way over. You're going to cut out words. You're going to your sentences, you're going to have someone else read it, they're going to give you suggestions, you're going to cut out more words, and eventually you're going to work down to something that fits within the parameters. And it takes time, it's not something you just sit and write out the first time. Because you're probably going to write too many words and talk to someone who's not a science or not in your area to proofread. And so again, that's remember your audience. At research day, your audience is going to be people from a broad range of research labs and with a broad range of research interests, so be sure the language you use is accessible to those people. Again, HSRC, Health Sciences Research Commons, let me show you where under resources, under page. 
Data Science is Research Commons. If you just want to actually look at other abstracts and other posters, in fact, this is a great place to see examples. Is go to the Health Sciences Research Commons. You go under Collections. You'll see Research Day posters and presentations from. Here is the abstract, so poster they did, it was two years ago, there's the abstract they wrote, and yeah, so there's the actual poster they did. So that's when you submit to HSRC, they'll be the abstract, we'll collect all that information, and we'll ask you to share a PDF. But now, individuals can post this URL to CV or resume or whatever. Now, other people can actually see their poster, not just read their abstract or just see the title. And then, what's interesting, I just talked about metrics. So, this poster has been downloaded 120 times. And so, that would have been zero otherwise, you know, because otherwise it would have been in someone's closet. So, now it's 120 people have seen that poster. Probably some of those were like the person's mom. Or but, you know, <laughs> presumably some of those are other researchers who are interested. Uh, and then PlumX metrics is okay, that's another uh, 16 times the abstract. Yeah, that's where you can get some of the metrics. So you can kind of see, so I just randomly picked one. People are downloading it and reading it. It's a way to get your name out there. It's a way, especially if you're in the area of research, it's a way to get more out of your poster. So that is okay. So questions on that. So right now, if you have questions, or if you want to contact me later. Um, I'm happy to look at abstracts if you want just another set of eyes and I have no idea what work you're doing so I'm happy to look at it and tell you if I understand it. Um, feel free to email me about that or any other questions about this and if you could feedback form URL here if you could give me feedback on this session. I'll leave that for a moment. And any questions right